Hello, hello. Today I am doing another collab with a friend of mine. This is Lolo from Sitting Pretty. Yes. Hey, everyone. Ah! <laughs> I'm so freaking excited for us to finally do a yes. collab together. Um, for the people who don't know who you are, tell them what you do on your channel and like what other social medias you're making videos on. Awesome. So what's up everyone? It's your girl Lolo here um, from Sitting Pretty. I have my YouTube channel where I create like lifestyle content with a disability spin and I talk about everything from dating with a disability, as you know, things not to say to people with disabilities and just the whole gamut of pretty much educating people, able body and disabled body, on what disability lifestyle looks like from all different angles. Um, and I also model for Tommy Hilfiger Adaptive and so many other brands that I've also worked with. Um, and I do public speaking and I act. My movie, can I plug my movie? Absolutely. So my movie that I star in, I am what, now this is what they told me. I am the first black woman with a disability to star in a feature film yes that part the movie is called give me liberty it comes to theaters august 23rd so please make sure you check your local listings and get your ticket and support content that involves disabled talent that's amazing yes yes it's it's literally a really great film it premiered at sundance and the cam film festival which are like the two biggest most prestigious film festivals like in hollywood in the world and uh yeah so i do that and of course follow me on instagram at it's lolo love i-t-s-l-o-l-o-l-o-v-e and you'll find all kinds of other content there as well yay <laughs> oh my god it comes out the day after my birthday shut the front door mm -hmm, mm -hmm. girl that's how i was like oh, that's awesome birthday girl. present to me yes wow yes. disabled women of color yes oh my god i'm so, so excited, excited. <laughs> yeah, no, i'm hyped i'm hyped about it all right so today we are going to be talking about uh, being ambulatory wheelchair users, yes. more specifically um, being chronically ill and wheelchair users, Yes. answering the question why, how, when we started using wheelchairs mm -hmm. to accommodate our chronic illnesses. Yes. So do you want to talk about yourself, like what was your experience, like diagnosis and like when when did you decide to start using a wheelchair? Why? Like, go ahead and just give me like the 411 on you. Okay, so I was diagnosed with ALS when I was 14. At the time, uh, throughout high school, I used um, like leg braces that helped lift my feet because by that time my legs started to um, weaken because ALS is a neurological uh, muscular disease that affects the nerves in your back that go to your muscles to tell your muscles to move. Mm -hmm. So over time, um, your muscles become weaker and you lose muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So upon my diagnosis, that was kind of the, the first thing was my right arm that had went completely limp. Um, and then my legs started to be affected. So, um, by the time it was time to move to LA to go to college, cause originally I'm from Northern California. Um, I needed to figure out how I was going to get to class. Mm -hmm. And I knew the leg braces were not going to get me to class in time. The college campus is like three times bigger than my high school campus back home. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to start using a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And I just made the decision based on what my needs were in order to get through my day. Right. I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind of anything socially what the issue could be if you know would i get bullied for using a wheelchair would i be looked at different because i use a wheelchair literally my thought process was i have to get to class i'm in college how am i going to get there i gotta use a wheelchair i have no yeah. other choice and that's kind of when using the chair started and that's pretty much how i've gone you know these past 13 years as a wheelchair user um you know throughout my life like i look at it like I have to get from point A to point B. I'm gonna have to use my chair. Yeah, I, I was so, I was just wondering. So with like muscle difficulties specifically mm -hmm. with ALS. Mm -hmm. So is what's happening? Is it painful or is it that it's not functioning? for you in order to like move forward um it's a little bit of both okay it's a little bit of both it's painful in the sense of when i overexert myself mm 
um, that's when the pain will start to kick in. Um, it's it's painful because like for instance like my back is hurting right now mm -hmm. but it's because I I have like a slight um, bit of scoliosis because the muscles in my back aren't holding my spine in the place that it needs to be so mm -hmm. it will cause uh, me to have pain that way mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a little bit of both and then you know even my legs, they work because I'm able to walk around in smaller spaces or short distances. Um, but, you know, it's... it's You have an affected gait. Exactly. Gait. And for gait, for anyone who doesn't know, um, gait is a word that just means how you're walking. Yeah. Um, so, and it would affect your gait, maybe like you move a little bit slower. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. So I move slower. I like to call it like the penguin walk. I do like the left, right, left, right thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I don't necessarily like bend my legs at the knees. Mm -hmm. It's more so like keeping my legs straight and just going like back and forth, back and forth. I try to consciously like try and use my muscle to, mm -hmm. you know, walk, but I look at it as like, as long as I don't lose my balance, I'm okay. Yeah. However that whatever I need to do in order right. to make that happen. I think a lot of, of people with chronic illnesses try to like, I think there's a really like bad misconception that like chronically ill people who use wheelchairs mm -hmm. are giving up. And right. like, like when, and I get when that they, a lot on my channel too. Yeah. yeah. That like, so if you use a wheelchair, you're not even trying to like maintain muscle mass mm -hmm. or trying to like, uh, you know, a keep your health stable and or preserve positive. your energy, right? Um, and so, like you just said, like obviously not just because you use a wheelchair doesn't mean that you don't that you don't try to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, it just may not be when people are seeing you because when people are seeing you, you're out and about, exactly. and the world is very big. Exactly, and, and you need to use your wheelchair to get around it. Exactly. Um, for me, um, I only recently it's mm -hmm. been a few years but it mm -hmm. feels recent to me started mm -hmm. using a wheelchair and i feel like it's been like three or four years maybe mm -hmm. um and so i have a degenerative condition called ehlers danlos syndrome which mm -hmm. is a connective tissue disorder and it means that my body is creating defective collagen and mm. collagen is the glue that holds your whole body together Got so it. so it affects everything from like my senses to my internal organs mm -hmm. um and obviously like my joints and my muscles and my blood vessels mm -hmm. um so when people ask me why do i use a wheelchair it's uh i try to just say i have ehlers danlos syndrome but a lot well, of people don't know like, what it is yeah exactly that's the same thing <laughs> with me i'm like oh because i was diagnosed with als and they're like yeah. uh okay yeah so yeah with time i can explain like that there's actually quite a few different reasons for me to use a wheelchair. Um, the first being that it's very painful for me to walk because essentially all my joints are loose hinges. Mm. So mm. Um, it's two things. The joints themselves hurt because they're like, you know, they're swishing around on themselves. Got it. And then my muscles hurt because my muscles try to compensate for the fragility of my joints by being tight and tensing mm. and trying to hold the joints together. Gotcha. So I'm experiencing muscle pains and, and joint pains. pains. Yeah. And it's very intense. Like whenever I stand up, I compare it to like walking on rocks or uh, if sometimes it gets very bad walking on glass. Mm. When I first started feeling the pains, I thought that I had fractures in my feet. Was mm. like was what was what I thought the pain was. Yeah. Um but really it's just that when I stand up, I'm putting pressure on my joints and my feet and all of them kind of collapse into the ground. Mm. My feet are kind of like bags of bones. And so and so when all those bones like squish down, it's painful. It does feel like walking on rocks. Interesting. Um, so like so there's the pain aspect of it like the muscle and the joint pains um but also like i said the joints they're not uh like held together properly mm -hmm. so they're very fragile and every time i walk i'm at risk of like dislocating my ankle or dislocating my knees or my hips mm -hmm. um which is like a injury that's gonna like hold me back uh so i try to not yeah dislocate things yeah 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 um, of course the wheelchair is gonna be the safest way for me to move around mm -hmm. in terms of injury risk mm -hmm. um and it's the only way i can get around because if i try to walk for more than 
I think I have like I reached my like tap me out tap me out I can't handle it anymore moment like after five minutes of, gotcha. of walking gotcha. uh, my gait is not really affected at all like if mm -hmm. I walk around the room like uh, I walk at a typical speed mm -hmm. I walk in a way that, like uh, it, it depends on how much pain that I'm in yeah if I'm in more pain I will kind of my gait will be affected but if I'm in like moderate mm -hmm. like tolerable levels of pain yeah then yeah you you would never be able to tell it's like a very typical gait that like people are like you don't look like you're in pain like, yeah yeah well, I've just learned how to tolerate it very yeah, well yeah 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 <laughs> um, totally. and, and uh and the final thing is the dysautonomia like because I have connective tissue problems mm -hmm. um and defective collagen my blood vessels they are impacted in a way uh I don't want to say anything that's like incorrect but they're impacted in a way that like if i'm standing up for too long or even sometimes it depends on my health mm -hmm. on any particular moment sometimes mm -hmm. if i stand up too fast even like the blood will come rushing down to my feet and mm. pull my feet and i'll lose all the blood in my head oh shit so then i'll get dizzy and nauseous and eventually faint i'll pass out got and, like, it and like that because like there's no blood up here mm. my face turns white and then like got it so i can't i can't be on my feet yeah for like yeah. long periods yeah. but like at maximum i have like maybe like a five minute limit on my feet mm -hmm. and and that i'll probably have to like shift my weight maybe yeah. like i'll put my knee to rest on top of a chair or something like I, i'm like trying to navigate pain the entire time that I'm standing up interesting yeah. mm -hmm. interesting you know what I never knew that I mean I think the thing that's so interesting and what I love about just like YouTube in general is that although I've had my disability I've been the only person within my immediate circle of family and friends with the disability so online is really how I've been learning about other people's disabilities mm -hmm. and I know I've known you for a long time now and I never even really understood exactly what the disability was and then especially when we were just kicking it like right before we started recording we was chopping it up big time <laughs> um before we started recording, I was kind of like observing because I'm never around other people with disabilities like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like curious, like, oh, you know, well, how does Annie get around? Does she get around the same way that I do? Or what, you know, why is she using the wheelchair versus me? And like all these other things. So I I'm just really glad to like hear, have a better understanding of your experience versus you know mine because truthfully i'm usually the only person mm -hmm. with an experience that involves a disability yeah 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 so now you know essentially when i'm walking around it's i'm walking because yeah, you was killing it because yeah. i was like oh damn like Annie's out here killing it right now like yeah. walking around and i'm just like and i'm like and i'm walking around and i'm like holding on to the wall and I'm just like trying to like make sure I don't fall but yeah but it's, I do it's, that but in a more kind of discreet way like in mm -hmm. a way that like a lot of people just won't notice like you don't notice like you just think that I'm being cool when I'm leaning against the wall or when I'm like uh, or, yes. when, or when I'm when I have my foot on top of a table of a mm -hmm. coffee table right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. or people think like it's bad manners when people put their feet on top of the table I'm like yeah I'm trying to accommodate my pain levels yeah yeah like so yeah. I, I don't know if I do that on purpose I don't think I do yeah. But people will interpret it like, oh, this person has like cool body language. Yeah, yeah. Like they they're like leaning on stuff and right. they're very like comfortable looking. Mm -hmm. Uh especially right putting your feet up on things right, or like right. or like like I just I did like the Captain Morgan on top of a table. Yeah. Right. So like so that kind of thing I guess is interpreted as like cool body language. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm lifting my leg Captain Morgan style onto the table because it hurts. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is that um you you talking about how you discreetly are like managing your pain for me because I have the the more of like a, a muscle weakness muscle mass thing I discreetly move literally like in different ways so like my right arm is limp but like I always use this as an example because it's the most obvious one my right arm is limp like I can't bend it on my own right now but if I do this like people don't even notice it. I would. Uh, yeah, I'm mind blown. Yeah, I, I yeah. No and idea. so a lot of times when I'm doing this, or I'm talking like, because once it's in this position, I'm good. So yeah. I can do like this, or I can like 
turn up like this and so I'm look good yes. but then like my arm will start to drop so I'll just catch it on this side and I just like do one of these numbers or something like when I'm out partying or whatever the case is so it's always kind of exactly what you said like yeah discreetly and even when I'm in leg pain or my hips will hurt or my knees will hurt I will sit like Indian side exactly like what you yeah. do this is like the best thing to this like is, ever see. or stretched out is like always a fave um but I do the same thing as well like in order to manage my pain is yeah. I'll sit a certain way or I'll sit cute or people are like oh that's kind of like the whole sitting pretty thing like oh you sitting pretty or you sitting cute like you know it's just like well I'm just trying to make sure my hip doesn't pop out of I was <laughs> I would love for more people to like know that because for me like mm -hmm. when I see people sitting like this with cross legs yeah under um I sometimes I'm like what an EDS pose right mm -hmm. like like mm -hmm. I see it because I live it yeah right yeah so, so like when I see people doing like these very wide hipped position mm -hmm. um, seating because you, like hips wide, like I said, all the joints are like in pain. So yeah. like, like think about how many joints are in the body. It's so much. Yeah. So my hip joints are in pain all the time too. It's mm -hmm. the, and for me, it's the most comfortable like this. Yeah. Even, even like putting my knee up like this because like in this position, mm -hmm. I'm pushing my leg joint into mm -hmm. my hip. So I'm more comfortable like that. Interesting. Like, so you like, like clicking the joint. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what's interesting is so when I'm sitting in my chair for too long, mm -hmm. my hips will start to hurt. So for me, I'm trying to like, it feels like in my head, this is how I interpret it. I don't know, like the medical situation or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I will like sit a certain way in order for the pain to almost like move away for like to get the pressure off of one hip mm -hmm. but the way i'm sitting like you think i'm cool like if i were to like sit like this or something right. like that people would be like oh you're killing it but it's really to get the pressure off of this hip because it's killing me right now right. you know what i mean and so I'll, I'll do that in my chair and a lot of times like you know when i'm doing my modeling i will model in a certain way to like manage kind of like the pain mm -hmm. but it'll come off like super dope so i'm like in my chair like this and they're <laughs> thinking oh she's hitting a pose and it's like no like my back is just killing me so i had to like rest back but the but i'll keep yes. a face like so it's, it's all kind of like working within itself you need to do a video about like disability posing in fashion modeling oh. Feel like i pose like this and i and i love that you just told me about like so I very discreetly like lift my arm up to this level and once yeah. it's up here I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I, like yeah. This is such cool information, especially like just in terms of like I so I love like when people talk about body language and how to interpret body language. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel very excluded as someone with physical disabilities because really? like because body language is so different for us. Right, right. Like like I just said, mm -hmm. like someone might think that I think I'm all that. Yeah. Because of the way I like lean on stuff mm -hmm. or, put, or put my That's feet on stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so like you know people who interpret body language will interpret it like that. They'll interpret it like oh, oh this person thinks it's too yeah. cool for school yeah. or like what bad manners or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like. Disability is so excluded from that. Like bo body language isn't always gonna mean right like, those things. Right, right. So like I would love like stuff like that. I think is so important to to talk about. Like yeah, like the different small things like that that we do with our bodies in order to like accommodate whatever is going on with mm -hmm. us physically. Mm -hmm. um, Coming up in part two. Uh, what was the process of actually? getting our wheelchairs as chronically ill and mm -hmm. uh, ambulatory people yes um because i think that a lot of people uh think that they have to wait for a doctor to, to prescribe them mm -hmm. with the chair mm -hmm. um but there's actually a few different ways to you know navigate the situation and mm -hmm. there's a lot of details that people just are unfamiliar with and like don't even know how to like ask yeah so yeah so what was your process like how did you bring it up to your doctor like the possibility or like or did you even like did you even talk to a doctor before mm -hmm. trying to get one like what was your process with that 